everybody. Uh, my name is Spencer Crum. I'm from Portland. Uh, it's great to be in New York. Thanks to GitHub for putting it on, and thank I'm really pleased that we're supporting the Software Freedom Conservancy. They're a fantastic organization. Okay, so this talk is, is really not 10 minutes long, so we're going to go through pretty quickly. So this is kind of my, uh, this is sort of a how do I do things talk. So I spend a lot of time in the shell, and I think that as, a, as, a computing, as computing has gone forward and we all got MacBooks and stuff, we kind of stopped doing as much with the shell. And so this is kind of some, some dumb shell tricks that I use, especially around Git, that uh, hopefully you can take home and use too. So there's some bash aliases, there's some bash functions, there's some dumb little scripts, and maybe they can make you a little bit more efficient. Ideally, you, what I want you to take is actually the patterns that I'm going to use, and not, not specifically these lines of code. Um, but if you end up taking these lines of codes, that's fine. This is the GitHub where all that stuff is, um, or at least it will be later today. OK, so I'm a bad typist, so I'll just alias stuff. So a bash alias basically works like the stuff on the left equals the stuff on the right. So I can't type make dir, I can't type source, so just whatever. I also don't like to type very much, so I'm not going to type all of git out. That just introduces the opportunities for problems. Um, I'm not going to type git push origin master, because I can type gpom or g-o-r-m. Um, these things are just, I don't have time for that. <laughs> um, I'll also screw up the origin space master or an origin slash master, so it, it adds consistency too. Um, with a bash alias, you can override a command that already exists. So you probably already have the middle one in your bash RC already, but Fez is just a, a Linux program that will open up image. But it opens it zoomed, and I want it to be full screen. So I just, every time I run Fez, it's Fez cap F. You can also see how UTC date is a new command that we've created using an alias that gives us the time in, um, in UTC, which your servers should all be in unless your system administrators are bad. Um, PyDoc, I think I stole PyDoc from someone, but basically it just you run PyDoc JSON and it opens up the JSON Python documentation in less, which is all you really wanted. MShuffle will just pick which episode of Next Generation I'm watching today. Um, this is I'm going to lunch and it's time for things to be on the server. So just BS commit. <laughs> um, and what's meant to demonstrate is you can put a semicolon in an alias. So you could go just totally nuts. Um, I'm, I don't know the alphabet. So I have a command that will dump the alphabet. And I have a command that will dump the alphabet with numbers. So I can see that K is the 11th letter. And I need Unicode Snowman available. And I need the ASCII table. So yeah. So man ASCII will just give you the ASCII table. But that one will like take it out of man and dump it into a table that doesn't in anyway. Um, you could put environment variables inside aliases and make new commands that way. So there you could see an example of UTC date by just setting the TZ variable or the one above it. So typically my uh, openstack.org is not in my DNS search scope. But when I type OSSH server, it will go to server.openstack.org. Um, this is a little bit experimental, but you could put regexes basically in aliases and then like kind of get them out on the other side and kind of grep for something that looks like a MAC address. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so I'm an operations engineer by trade, and so I write a lot of files in YAML and JSON, and it really sucks to wait 15 minutes for tests to find out that like I put the long, the, the, the trailing comma in JSON, and so I don't have valid JSON. So I have three lines. I have YAML check and JSON check and puppet parser validate that will basically just validate that a file is, is valid JSON or YAML or whatever. And this saves me a lot of time. Um, I don't have any time to explain to you how this works. But what you should do <laughs> is basically get it to the point where you can dynamically control what your prompt does. So I can turn on git tracking in my prompt. I can turn it off. I can turn on file tracking in my prompt. I can turn it off. I can turn on RVM. I can turn it off. Um, it's really useful. Um, Classic git config stuff, it wouldn't be fair to have it in there. I, I still can't spell, so alias gurp equals grep. Uh, especially if you're new to git. These three aliases in the middle are going to save you a lot of time. I think probably most people have them, but they're very, very good. Unless you're on CentOS, in which case that top one is stupid. Um, there's also some stuff here for like if you have submodules. And this kind of neatly shows, it's been shown today, but if you want to make an alias that has semicolons or more complicated bashisms in it, you need to do this, this strange behavior of, dem of creating a function called f or, or whatever with this bang syntax and then calling it. Um, I didn't make this up. I stole this from somebody. They're linked here. But if you put this stuff and then a couple other things in your dot files, when you type git diff and there was an image, it will pop up three windows with the, the original image, the, like the new image, and then like a weird transparency with pixels filled in for where the image changed, which is pretty sweet. And it doesn't screenshot very well, so you don't get to see it. Um, 
So bash functions. So bash functions just kind of look like that. You just kind of write that in your bash RC or whatever, and it's like our little script that you had. So this was, I was working on a book, and I needed to SSH tunnel in our desktop through that. So it was just a little one-liner instead of running those two commands in two separate windows. Um, this is actually really good. So you're, you're like five directories deep in a Git repo, and you're like scared, and you just, I just want to go home. And so <laughs> what CDP will do is it will take you up to home, and then you can run git status, you can run a rebase without running into any directories that don't exist, any of that stuff. It's, it's, it's good. Um, this is also really useful. This is probably the other useful thing in the talk. It's just magic. So if someone says, hey, will you check out PR17? So you CD to the directory that has that git repo, and you type PR17, and it pulls down GitHub's pull request number 17. And then you can run the tests, you can look at the code, you can actually branch from there and go somewhere else. Um, and it's, it's done through some magic, it's just some like refs that exist in GitHub that I don't know. Um, I don't really like going to the web browser if I can stay on the command line. So I wrapped uh, GitHub's hub utility and created git fork and git pull request so that I can just commit, fork, push, and then pull request all from the command line. And pull request spits out a URL that I can just like paste into chat or whatever. Um, so in bash functions, you can also override commands that already exist. But in a function, you have a lot more control of what you can do. So CD record is just records a CD in Linux, but it doesn't eject at the end. And I think that a CD burning program should eject when it's done. And so it just, yeah, it just runs CD record and then ejects at the end. And, and that's kind of useful. Um, I work on OpenStack, so there should be some OpenStack in the talk. So designate is the DNS part of OpenStack. And if you want to know all the domains that you've, you've set, you have to type that gross thing, with, and I just, I put it in an alias because I didn't want to deal with it. And so aliases actually move out of just convenient commands and into holding data for me that I don't want to keep in my head. Um, same with clean float. Okay, so I use Garrett. Garrett is a Git server that's written in Java, it's from Google, and I think a lot of people probably use it, but maybe not this crowd, this is kind of the GitHub crowd. Um, and so basically, when you want to make a pull request, you actually make something called a review. And so at some point in your life, we found out if you work with Garrett, you write a tool called Git Review. So we wrote this Git Review in 2011. And then like last year sometime, the Go coders for Golang were like, we made a new tool called Git Review. And we're like, hi, um, that's not good. We're, we're conflicting names. And they're like, oh, whoops, our bad. And so now they have Git Code Review. <laughs> and they're ready to go. All right, so Garrett also has this weird SSH API. So you SSH into it on the left, see, and then on the right, you type garrett-h, and, it's, and it gives you this help output, because it's, it's, like it's like a command line utility like over SSH. There's no shell involved, because it's Java, but don't worry about it too much. And so I decided that was, that was annoying, so I wrote a little function that just kind of wraps it, and then that dollar star on the end basically means everything I pass to Garrett goes into this function, goes into the SSH, and then comes out the other side. So I can ban commit, I can create commit, I can, I can do whatever I need to do. And then I went a little bit further and I started defining, like basically I inspect the first argument to the function and decide if it's whip, and if it's whip, I take my own action. So I've added arguments, I've added subcommands to this Garrett thing that's actually on a remote server entirely with local configuration, which is a little weird. Okay, so if you type vim plus 24 and then file name, does anyone know what happens? It opens it to line 24. And if you type that history line, it actually gives you the last command that you wrote. And if you type, you know, just git grep and you have some config file set, you get that colon 75 colon output. Maybe people see where I'm going with this. And so my vim command has been overloaded. So it inspects my last command history. And if the last command that I typed was git grep, and I just click paste in that change log colon 75 colon, it looks and it's like, oh, I should strip that number out and then call vim with plus 75 on that file and just opens vim directly to the thing that I just grepped for, which is kind of, maybe, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I did. <laughs> um, so this has been Stupid Git Tricks. Uh, my name is Spencer Crum. Um, I'm Nibblizer in IRC and everywhere. Uh, thanks for coming and thanks for supporting uh, the Software Freedom Conservancy.